How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Sponge about thousand and today we're gonna forecast the 2022 summer for the United States. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So to begin this video, your questions are probably will this be a warmer than average summer or will this be a cooler than average summer or will we see a little bit more moisture? I'll answer those questions in this video by talking about several of the factors that will affect the amount of moisture you'll experience this summer as well as the amount of warmth you'll experience this summer as well, at least relative to average in your location. So let's first take a look at the Enzo outlook over the next several months. And we just got the recent update as of April 14th by the CPC and look at that now it were more likely to experience La Nina type conditions headed into the summer months because before it was a little bit more uncertain between whether or not we're going to experience a neutral pattern or more of a La Nina pattern but now it's slightly more likely now that we're going to experience a La Nina um, a La Nina type pattern for this summer, including the hurricane season as well, which is definitely important. I'll make a hurricane season update video in, in the relative in the relatively near future but um this will definitely affect how um some of the summer conditions you will experience throughout the united states now that we're more certain we're going to experience a la nina as now we're now for the months of june july and august you're more likely to experience a la nina um than um than any other pattern such as a neutral pattern and far more likely than an el nino pattern so this summer we should expect la nina type conditions which will definitely play a role in in determining the conditions you'll experience this summer to take a look at what typically happens during a la nina we typically see a pronounced jet stream dip and it's a little bit warmer and drier than average throughout the southern portion of the united states so in areas in the um so areas in the south typically do experience a warmer summer and a drier than average summer and it will only um get worse throughout the southwest where you guys are already in a drought and to add a la nina on top of that will only enhance drought conditions in that region it's simply a little bit more moist than average and cooler than average throughout the northern united states as a result of this pronounced jet stream dip so that's only something we're gonna need to take into consideration when making the summer forecast and it's simply a little bit more moist than average throughout the ohio river valley as a result of this jet stream dip steering a lot of these troughs right into the central portion of the ohio river valley and even into the northeast at times so it's definitely something we're going to need into, to take into consideration making this summer forecast but there are other factors we need to uh, pay close attention to to determine what type of conditions you'll experience this summer throughout the united states so the next fork so the next um data point we need to take a look at is the cfs model which shows where it's typically drier than average or where it's simply more moist than average or at least what's a forecast when it comes to precipitation and temperature anomalies for the summer and you see that um between the months of Jul june july and august the accumulated precipitation mean monthly anomaly is leaning towards or is leaning towards less precipitation than average for a lot of the midwest on the midwestern portion of the united states as well as the pacific northwest where we do see drier than average conditions and if we were to take a look at around the um, right up uh, along the east coast we do see a little bit um conditions a little bit more moist than average um expected from the cfs computer model which is a climatology model that forecasts long that creates long-term forecasts so this could definitely change because it's very difficult to let alone forecast what it's going to happen beyond the five day mark in weather when we're talking about something that's for that's months out it's definitely um, more difficult to forecast so there's definitely this forecast is definitely subject to change from the cfs model but as of right now we should expect drier than average conditions for a lot of the western half of the united states and um more moist than average conditions throughout the eastern half and i'd say Harsh, um, the the reason why you, we're more likely to see more moist than average conditions 
um, for the East Coast could be potentially due to the warmer than average sea surface temperatures, which could encourage a little bit more of lifting of uh, upward motion in the atmosphere, which would create more precipitation um, possibilities for the East Coast. Now, take a look at the temperature anomaly for the summer, the three month temperature anomaly, you see that pretty much the entirety of the United States based on what the CFS model is stating is expected to receive warmer than average conditions. The only areas where it might be closer to average is right up along the Pacific coast. And this is as a result of the cooler than average sheets or temperatures that's currently happening just off the Pacific coast. So if you're right along the coast, chances are the temperatures will fall more in line with average rather than above average compared to the rest of the United States. But um, for the most part, but, um, but even then you still are more bound to experience at least slightly warmer than average temperatures right along the coast despite the cooler than average Pacific sea surf temperatures for this time of the year. And you see that this extends all throughout the United States. So this is definitely something we're gonna need to take into consideration when making the summer forecast as well. The CFS model leaning towards a warmer than average summer for pretty much the entirety of the United States as well as a little bit drier throughout the Midwestern and Western portion of the United States and a little bit more moist along the East Coast. Um, this could also be as a direct result of maybe an enhanced hurricane season as well as like I said, warmer than average sea surf temperatures that are expected for the Atlantic coast. So that's only something to keep in mind that um, we could see a warmer than average summer based on what the CFS model is stating at this time. Now, um, let me show you guys a drought monitor because this is another very important factor when determining uh, the long term when determining the long term climate of a specific area you see that um pretty much anywhere that's west of the missouri river valley it's a lot drier than average so so and um typically like i said in my previous videos a drought is very difficult to get rid of so it's unlikely that we're gonna see this drought completely disappear head into heading into the summer months so that would mean that more likely than not you will experience a much drier than average summer throughout the west coast which um um and also a warmer than average summer for the west coast um which would enhance the drought even further for you guys which is definitely unfortunate because you guys are very um you guys are just very desperate for rain along the western half of the united states but it seems like drought conditions are more likely than not going to continue this summer and not only will that bring drier than average conditions throughout the western half of the united states but also warmer than average conditions because when there's not enough water on the soil a lot of that shortwave radiation from the sun isn't broken down isn't um isn't wasted by trying to convert the um the water that's typically on surface from a liquid to a gas phase and, and instead that short wave radiation during a drought is mostly absorbed by the surface which heats up the earth more rapidly which is why deserts are typically a lot warmer than average um than um any other biome um in a lot of areas where there's a heavy amount of short wave radiation because there isn't enough moisture to um pretty much um to pretty much um prevent the short wave radiation from um, getting completely absorbed by the surface since some of that short wave radiation and more moist environments is wasted on trying to convert uh, the liquid into a gas phase but if there isn't enough water on the surface that's not going to happen which is why typically during a drought it's not only drier than average but it's a lot warmer than average so as a result i do expect a much warmer and drier than average summer for a lot of the western half of the united states and if we were to take a look at the east coast pretty much anywhere east of the Miss missouri river valley you see that the drought is doesn't really exist for those areas so you guys shouldn't really expect a drier than average summer for this year and if anything it should be the opposite where it will be a little bit more moist than average as a result of warmer than average sea temperatures which 
I'll show you right now, if we were to take a look at the Atlantic, you see that sea surface temperatures along the Gulf Coast, as well as the Atlantic coast are warmer than average. And this should encourage more of a upward motion in the atmosphere. The air molecules and the water vapor will be a lot more buoyant around the eastern half of the United States. And that will certainly encourage more condensation and precipitation occurring throughout the west uh, eastern half of the United States. While if we were to take a look at the Pacific coast, you see sea surf temperatures are cooler than average um through um for this year throughout the west coast so as a result um you there is a possibility that right up along the coast you might not necessarily experience temperatures that are well above average this summer if this continues and also it could encourage more of a sinking motion throughout the western half of the united states which would allow for more drier than average conditions to occur pretty much adding on um, worsening the drought situation throughout the western half of the united states so that's something something to keep in mind and to take into consideration when making this summer forecast as well but let me show you guys my 2022 summer forecast for the united states you see that for a lot of the eastern half of the united states i'm expecting it to be warmer and more moist than average because we're gonna see sea surface temperatures a little bit warmer than average which would encourage more of an upward motion in the atmosphere and that would encourage more low pressure systems to develop along the east coast and a higher rate of convection to occur overall as a result of a high of a higher than average um upward motion in the atmosphere and also i do expect it to be warmer than average at the same time because these temperatures are warmer than average and that is definitely a huge determinant in moderating temperatures um throughout any area of the world so the fact that sea surface temperatures are warmer than average makes it more likely the eastern half of the united states will be warmer than average as well and plus the cfs model is also forecasting a warmer than average year for the eastern half of the united states i'm expecting it to be a little bit more cool and moist than average throughout the northern um great lakes region because of a la nina which typically brings more jet stream dips and as all cooler than average conditions throughout the northern united states as well as a little bit more moist because of the the influx of troughs that are associated with mo more jet stream dips and um taking a look at the west coast i'm expecting it to be warmer and more dry than average overall as a result of the current drought that's going on this um, pacific um the pacific ocean sea surface temperatures are cooler than average which will make it more um which will which would encourage more of a sinking motion in the atmosphere throughout the west coast um and also we typically do see warmer and drier than average conditions along the west coast during a la nina so i do expect it to continue and unfortunately worsen the drought situation and i also expect it to be more warm and moist than average throughout the eastern half of the united states because a more active than usual hurricane season is forecasted for 2022 which should encourage more rainfall than usual as some of these tropical storms and hurricanes make landfall or at least impact the united states at, at least the east coast so that's something something to be aware of as well throughout the east coast so this is my summer forecast for 2022 if you want an even more in detail forecast just make sure to comment down your location or area down below and i'll make sure to give you guys a more in detail forecast regarding what you should expect this summer so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather lake content make sure to like if you like this video make sure to comment down below um if you are interested regarding the conditions you should expect this summer and i hope you guys all have a great day